Hey kids, Mr. Glenn here, hope you're well. We are going to be coding in Tinker today and we're going to continue to code in Tinker. And the idea is that we will split and fork depending on what you feel comfortable in having a go at yourselves. So you need to have a think about what you're good at and what you like doing and which path you would like to go and have a look at. And what I mean is by this is that there are two types. There is Python and there is JavaScript. Python is an easier to understand computing language or programming language. The reason is that it uses regular language. It has fewer things like capitalization of names and things and as you go to type you will make fewer mistakes I would imagine. JavaScript is more to do with things like working on web pages and making web pages and games within web pages and things like that so making them work. So when we did our HTML, HTML was about how things look on the page. JavaScript is how things work on the page. So you can make things happen on pages. JavaScript by and large is used, I would say, wider across the world. Whereas Python is used for data scientists and things like this, broadly speaking. But Python can also be used, like I saw the other day, was a Game Boy emulator. And they made a Game Boy work in Python. You used it on a web page and it worked just like a Game Boy with black and white screens. It's absolutely amazing. Both are wonderful languages and both are used in secondary. So it's up to you. You can go with the easier to learn to begin with, which is Python, or if you want to set yourself a little bit of a harder challenge, go into JavaScript. But in Tinker, it's quite simple. It's only an intro. An introduction, sorry, not an intro. An introduction to both languages. If you're a wizard, why not try both? And see which one you like the most. So, what is this going to look like? I'm going to remind you about what your start pages look like, which is here right now. I'm going to go into my page, into my student page, and show you how to get there. If you'd forgotten, you can go and Google Tinker Coding, or you can go into Tinker itself. So I'm going to type in Tinker here, tinker.com. You can see that I've been there already. I am going to go and make a bookmark and drag it to my bookmark page, and then I'm going to go and sign in. And when I sign in, I can say that I'm a student, and then I'm going to sign in with uh, my Google account, which is through school, my school email. It'll know who I am, and at the top of my dashboard, it should show me what projects and lessons I'm working on at that time. And you can see that I'm here with year four. Year four are doing this at the same time. And you are in Programming 300. So when you go to Programming 300, you'll be given a screen where you can go through all the little buttons. And in here, we've got Intro to Game Design. Now, inside this one, this week, we are going to go and make a two-player canon game where we use physics. And it's a little bit like... Um, Angry Birds, where you can fire things and it uses gravitational pulls and gravity to pull things back down. So you go and start, and once we assign you new courses, you will see them in your dashboard. And then we will also give you the choice whether you want to go through Python or JavaScript. So once your game has loaded up and you've got your physics two player canon game on the left hand side here, you can see where my mouse is. This is your tutorial section and it will show you and guide you how to go through each and every step. 
on the right hand side you've got all your assets and so we talked about assets in both illustrator and html where you can pull in your resources it's another name for resources except it's a bit more precise your assets are here and you can edit these and you can make your game look however you want and you can see that it does have that kind of angry birds kind of feel to it so i'm going to read what it is that i'm going to be learning i'm going to hit next and then i can start to pull in the blocks as it shows me in my tutorial go next and then i can start to follow what's going on in here there are some things though that i show the year fours that will catch them out and that is if you want to go and change the stage so if you look at the top of the page now you can see that i've got my code and my stage when i go to my stage and i want to change the background for example i get examples here of what kind of background it is that i want when i go back into my code some things will have disappeared sometimes so i go into my code and sometimes this tutorial might disappear you need to look for the picture of a book that is at the top so that your tutorial will come back to being shown on the left hand side the other thing is when you're in your stage is that some people forget because they get a little bit bamboozled by the screen underneath me you can just see underneath my screen now here where my mouse is underneath me where the play button is there is an full screen and come out of full screen just like youtube in the bottom right hand corner okay so just to show you what we see as well so i'm going to go and bring my teacher chrome up for a second so that you can see what we see so inside here, inside this screen, this is our teacher panel. So we can see where you're at and also see the percentage as well. What we will start to do in the pages for both Firefly and your Google Classroom is start to highlight the people who are high flyers and who are doing well. So those children who have jumped, say, six places in the rankings, we will highlight those children out and say, congratulations. So we are keeping a track of what it is that uh, you're doing. If you get stuck, don't forget, you can also email us, both myself and Mr. Max, and we will support you all the way. As always, Year 6, good luck.